objectively look ugly. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Hello, hello, and welcome to my little slightly festive fashion corner. Today's um, fashion talk might be a little bit of a walk, but I do hope you're here for it. First and foremost, I do not encourage any hate towards anyone and I appreciate Smokey Glow as a content creator. I will continue to refer uh, to her as SG or Smokey Glow because we're not on first name basis and I'd like to show some respect. And um, I will link um, Smokey's channel down below with the video that we're talking about and all the good stuff. If you haven't seen it already or if you're not subscribed, please do support the channel. Smokey, as part of her Vlogmas, has published a video titled Luxury Brands Have Lost It, Holiday Edition, as a continuation of previously published video in the same spirit, Luxury Brands Have Lost It, and I thought I knew I was signing up for when I clicked in. Um, a heap of ugly comments, fugly guesses away from me and all the good stuff. However, I was confronted with a whole other set of poor arguments that had just made me sad and mad, made me smart. I have a lot of things that I'm passionate about, so I'm not willing to let people just come for it without knowing anything about it, just because they don't appreciate it and they don't like it. Um, presumably even Smokey has a set of hobbies or passions that you know she would be willing to defend. As a creator disclosure, I tried cutting down the video to sort of like digestible clips so that we can I can react to it, but Cutting out pieces that would put things out of context, I wanted to avoid um, assumptions and misunderstandings. Um, so we're going to go through sped up clips, item by item. We've got a curated selection featuring Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Dior. I'll try to keep it concise, but I don't want to keep pausing to make my points. So I'll keep the original clips and talk after. And I'll also timestamp it and put it in uh, the comments so that we can, we can keep it organized. We love organization. All right, let's do this. First up, Louis Vuitton. I feel like that's where I find the nuttiest, craziest stuff that you just like would never believe actually exists with them at all. Because sometimes they have really weird stuff, but other times it's like just random clothing and bags that are super expensive, not necessarily like crazy stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about is this $2,200 teddy bear. Now, the interesting thing about this bear that caught my eye is there's a couple of things. Number one, I actually know about this bear because of TikTok. Um, I remember watching a TikTok I don't remember how long ago it was, but I was watching a TikTok about these Louis Vuitton teddy bears and it was talking about how the Kardashians have a bunch of them for their children. I don't know about you, okay? I like, I don't have any kids. Um, however, I did work in daycare and I can safely say there is not a child alive that would not absolutely destroy this teddy bear. I remember when I worked in daycare, we would have parents come in and buy their kids like Jordans, like little baby Jordans, which are very, very cute, but they grew out of them in like literally three seconds, especially the newborn babies. For toddlers, I at least understood it a little bit more, but the newborns would grow out of them in like three seconds and you would look, they're like $60, like little sneakers, or they'd have like little Nike onesies that were like 20 bucks each. And I'm like, that's crazy. So I already thought that was bonkers. Now we're talking about a $2,200 teddy bear for your baby slash toddler slash child. I feel like there's no way that the rich people who are buying this are actually allowing their children to utilize and play with this bear. Right? Like, there's not a chance Kylie Jenner is, like, giving her child Stormy this bear to play with. There's no way. There's no way. I don't care how rich you are. You're not rich enough to spend $2,200 on what seems to be a kind of exclusive teddy bear. Like, it seems like these are hard to get because they come out during the holidays. They're always a little bit different. They're, like, kind of limited edition, which is why I think people who are really big into stuff like Louis Vuitton, i.e. incredibly rich people, um, are able to buy these things and then sort of save them as, like, collector's items, I would imagine. But it's so strange to me because this was under the Louis Vuitton gifts for kids. And I'm just like, you know person, no matter how rich, I don't care if you're like Jeff Bezos rich, there is not a chance that you were buying this $2,200 bear to realistically give to a child for them to like put it in their mouth and destroy it. There's just not a chance that that's happening. And if you're buying it for just the sole purpose of like displaying it in your child's room, I also think that that's super weird. You can judge me if you want. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like my parents got me an American Girl doll when I was a kid. And I remember I had a Molly doll. I destroyed that doll. Absolutely destroyed her. Her hair a uh, wrap. I'm pretty sure I cut her hair at one point, but I played with it. Like it was this very expensive doll. Obviously, I didn't know that at the time. It was this very expensive doll that I was obsessed with. 
obsessed with and I got so much use out of and played with. But looking back, I'm like, wow, I could have done that with any doll. Whereas my sister, she had a Samantha doll. Hers is still in freaking pristine condition. She probably sell it for like thousands of dollars because it's like a 1990s Samantha American girl doll. She never played with it and hers is still in perfect condition and it's like looks great. However, at what cost? You had no fun with that doll. All you did was stare at it. I told I talked to about this all the time i'm like all you do is stare at that doll and like talk about how pretty she looks there's no fun in that there's no games in that that's not exciting that's kind of the equivalent i feel like for rich people with this louis vuitton teddy bear would be the equivalent of getting like an american girl let me just start with if we are going to judge rich people based on the kardashian clan i am going to disagree with you a lot i just love when people preface arguments with something but you know um as smokey says i'm not a parent I'm a parent and I owe luxury fashion items. So the daycare story, listen, pensive clothes for daycare and then get upset about the clothes or the shoes being destroyed. That sounds very much like the parent problem, not luxury fashion problem. So let's talk uh, about the arguments made about the teddy bear. First argument, rich people buy it, but kids can't play with it. Well, this is just a lovely sweeping generalization, in it? Why are kids not allowed to play with the toys? What is the argument behind this? Train outside, I'm sorry. Second argument. No way Kylie Jenner Kardashian, I don't know. No way Kylie Jenner is giving this to her kid to play with. But Smokey just said she saw it all on TikTok, how all the kids have them. And I can absolutely imagine Kris Jenner, who's by the way worth $170 million, buying one or two teddy bears like this for all her grandchildren. And they don't really care about whether it gets destroyed or not, whether the kids play with it or not. They probably don't care. The third argument is basically a double down on the first one. No one, not even Bezos, is rich enough to get Teddy this expensive. So Jeff Bezos' current net worth stands around 111 billion. People love to put up stories about the global crises that Jeff Bezos should be, per their personal opinion, solving or ending. And here we are arguing that Jeff Bezos is not rich enough to get a $2,200 teddy bear. Sounds like an overkill to me. People are rich enough. And even not rich enough people are familiar with the concept of saving up. Smokey elaborates that this teddy bear is probably exclusive. Yes, but not for the reasons that she would think or she mentions. Smokey mistakes the teddy for a Vivian doll that is famously brought out especially during Christmas time and is featured in annual Christmas collections. Uh, knowing about this teddy bear from TikTok kind of breaks my heart. Some of us remember this teddy bear from a Louis Vuitton fashion show from the Marc Jacobs era. These teddy bears were huge and on the stage. They were recently um, rediscovered by Virgil Abloh, who was with Louis Vuitton since 2012 and sadly passed away, losing his battle to cancer in early 2022 or late 2021. It already has a historical or fashion history value. And if you don't know or remember this, if you scroll down under the teddy bear a little bit, Louis Vuitton tells you the entire story of this teddy bear. Moreover, Virgil Abloh was Kanye West's best friend. They interned together with Fendi when they started their fashion careers. And I think it's not such a stretch to assume that not only Kardashians spends an exorbitant amount of money in shops like Louis Vuitton. Also, they have established personal relationships with the creators and with the executives in there. I can only imagine that they are getting invitations to shows, custom fitting and all that. Also, gifts just like this. The fourth argument is kind of killing me. You can't even buy it to display it in your or your children's room. Then Smokey kind of argues against herself by telling us this story, the doll story. Well, imagine this. I, as a parent, buy my children a lovely doll, a trendy one because kids are ruthless, you know how, how mean can they be. So I want them to have a nice thing. One child plays with it all the time, resulting that just one day that doll ceases to exist and turns into dust. This is just dust on the floor and that used to be the doll. Second child keeps it in a box in pristine condition, loves it, values it and treasures it so much that they still brag about it as a fully grown adult. To me as a parent, both scenarios are an absolute win as both children got the maximum enjoyment from that doll. But that doesn't sit well with Smokey as she argues with, so you still have that knowledge, no, but at what cost? Well, some kids actually do gain the enjoyment out of 
of taking care of and presentation of toys more than the fantasy play element. And it's also strange to assume that there is a correct way to play with toys. Just because children aren't engaging with a toy in a way that we expect them to, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. I mean, as long as they're not hurting anyone in the process. If they're engaging with toys, they are learning and practicing skills in their own way and that it should be encouraged. Last but not least, am I financially irresponsible if I budget in for a $2,200 teddy bear regardless whether I decide to display it in my room, my children's room, whether I play with it, whether they play with it, if I still put food on the table, provide for my child, pay rent, mortgage, what kind of person or parent does that make me? I mean, what do people that say, oh, I'm not a parent, say about that? All right, next up is the Lady Donkey holder. <laughs> Jesus. This is a $520 blooming key holder. What I loved about this one in particular and why I really wanted to talk about it was not even because it's like a very expensive keychain, because that's literally what it is. It's a $520 keychain, which again, to me, practicality is crazy because I don't know about anyone else. I have a lot of keychains. I have like a decent amount. Um, I would have had more if all of them hadn't have fallen off, like literally fallen off of my key holder. I feel like stuff breaks like this all the time, especially if you really look at where this is. This little thing looks nice, but like this chain, that's gonna break. So barring the fact that you're buying a $500 keychain, um, that's just gonna break. The reason I picked this one to talk about is because I love that in the luxury world, you can't call things what they are. I love that it's always like a key holder, not a keychain. A keychain, that sounds too mainstream. That's too poor. We're key holders and that's why this is important. The only thing that is so weird about this one to me is that I know that Louis Vuitton has little like key pouches and those actually make a little bit of sense to me. Like the key pouches make sense to me because it's like something you put on your keys that you can put cards or cash in. It's basically like a little wallet attached to your keys. The key pouch makes sense to me. It's still a glorified keychain, but at least it has a purpose. This is a $520 piece of plastic that just says Louis Vuitton. Go on Etsy. I know I'm not supposed to like talk about this because like it's bad, but like there are Etsy creators I know who create like LV inspired things and you could literally get this, like especially this like circle thing with the LV, 20 bucks. <laughs> Which is frankly how much they should be selling it for because I can guarantee it does not cost them more than pennies to make this product. Um, but yeah, this is the key holder, not the keychain. These people are rich, they're key holders. So Smokey says the scene talking about how this is just a glorified keychain. By the way, Louis Vuitton actually does sell an actual keychain, so they might differentiate the names for search engine optimization. My wild assumption, it might be just glorifying a keychain, who knows. Smokey is setting the scene by saying, this is just going to break. Again, this is just a logical fallacy. I don't want to dwell on this too much, but i really like to point out how Smokey had the opportunity to promote creativity and craftsmanship of Etsy shop. He chose to encourage buying counterfeit goods. Counterfeit market just perpetuates the global problem of how to protect the brand value, and the price is one of the issues of lost profit. This, to me, is just another way how to show yourself as wanting to be an owner of an LV item, but not willing to save up and or pay for it. I want it, but it's pricey, so I'm going to get a fake. That doesn't solve any luxury fashion problems we might actually have. And Smokey Glow says, these people are rich, they're key holders. Let me just say that you are a house owner and have a half a million subscriber count. Too many, you are filthy rich. Next, Louis Vuitton jewelry box. Okay, next we have a $2,900 jewelry box. I guess if you're buying this for someone, like a loved one, um, you probably have already bought them way more than $2,900 worth of jewelry. Like there's no way that you're buying this like very industrial looking case that's $3,000 um, and you haven't also bought them a very expensive piece of jewelry to put inside of it. However, the problem I have with this one, not even the problem, obviously the price, the problem I have is the price. The problem I have with this one is that it really does not look big. Like I would assume that this is kind of for a travel purpose. I feel like I see a lot of the Louis Vuitton like trunk stuff in terms of like traveling and everything like that. That's always what I've seen from them with these trunk style things. They have this like soft clothes, whatever. And you can see here, it does have like a little tray that you take out and then there's something underneath that you could lay flat. But overall, this doesn't seem like a lot of storage. And not only that, it doesn't really have any like proper jewelry storage. Like just from a practicality perspective, I have a jewelry box that I bought for literally like $10 that I use for travel. But that has like a little pouch that I could put hoop earrings in. And it has that little piece that has little holes in it. So if you have earrings, you can put your studs in there. They're not gonna get all mixed up. It has a special little holder for necklaces. So that way they're not getting all tangled while you're traveling. Like this, while aesthetically, I like the inside.
inside. I think it is kind of cute. Like the light pink is very pretty. So aesthetically, this is fine. But like in practice, if you're using this genuinely to travel with, there's no rhyme or reason to how you're supposed to be storing things. And there's no way to store things so they don't get all messed up. You'd think for how much you're spending, $3,000, it would have this sort of like insert inside of it that would make it so it actually organizes your jewelry. But by looking at the pictures, your jewelry, like if you look at this one, First of all, I love the poorly photoshopped image of this picture. The fact that this is all very obviously Louis Vuitton jewelry that they just photoshopped onto this box is so fucking funny to me. They're like, pay $3,000 for this product, but we can't pay to have proper photos taken so that way you can actually see to scale what your jewelry is going to look like. If you look here, like this little necklace is just like strewn about the top of it. The earrings are free balling. The bottom part, that jewelry, if you have more than one necklace in there, enjoy untangling your very expensive necklaces that you're putting in this $3,000 box. It makes no sense to me. I think practically this one pisses me off. Because it's like you really, for $3,000, couldn't even put the little thingy in there. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the flat thing that you, it has holes in it. And you stick your earrings through it. You couldn't do that. For $3,000, you couldn't do that. Okay. All that said, I can promise you this box would be more than enough for some people like myself to travel with, even live with. I have three pairs of earrings and one pair of watch. Am I still allowed to get this? How much jewelry is the appropriate amount to travel with? or own to begin with. And I really like the book. And whilst I agree there might be more organization compartments to it, what is disregarded is the fact that designer jewelry oftentimes come with its own pouch on dust bag. So you would just put those in the bag and chuck it all in and then off you go. There is a mention of a $10 jewelry box. I mean, good on you. She also want to talk about fast fashion, cheap quality, exploitation of cheap labor. Didn't think so. And I do agree that that photo is badly photoshopped absolutely now if you go into the boutique uh, you usually see things to scale and if you get it online and it's shipped to your home if you're still uh, unhappy with the size or what, or if something doesn't fit the process return is very smooth and at no cost so i think that sorts all the arguments out Louis Vuitton watch case. Again, this one at least, it doesn't piss me off so much because of like practicality. Like this at least has a storage for what you're doing. What pisses me off about this watch case is that it's fucking $8,000. <laughs> it's literally $8,000. Like I love that they do all the close-ups to show how like well-crafted this trunk is. And I did a video on Louis Vuitton and their trunks are kind of like where they started. They're what they're known for. They're very popular. I get that people love a Louis Vuitton trunk. $8,000 to store eight watches in a very, very, very small trunk. My favorite thing is looking at how big these things are. Okay, so this is 13 inches. No way. 13 inches long, seven inches high, and four inches in width. There's no way this is four inches in width. That wouldn't hold any watches. This part is four inches. So you have 13, seven inches tall, four inches long. So this is like this big, right? These things are always so much smaller than you think they are. Jesus, I don't even know if eight watches could fit in there. Maybe like tiny ones. Certainly not a big blinged out Rolex, which I would assume you have if you're spending $8,000 on a fucking watch case. <laughs> oh my God. You know, if you're just looking for that special someone in your life, a great gift for them is an $8,000 watch case perfect jesus how very dare louis vuitton show off their craftsmanship showing off how much handmade detailed work is put into this to give people a better idea of what their eight thousand dollars find them how very dare secondly smokey mentions the history of lv trunks Yes, they're absolutely iconic and I will accept no less. Imagine that Louis Vuitton started his trunk shop in mid 1800s, making such buzz as it was literally the first time travel trunks were made flat and therefore easily manipulated during travels and becoming a multi-billion fashion brand across the years. Imagine people thinking that those trunks matter. Thirdly, now this is very petty of me, but I understand and respect the fact that it might be described differently from what you're used to. So length is usually the largest dimension, width is usually the shortest dimension, and the third is the height. It's not this one, the side that is four inches, it's this one. But again, you can see it for yourself in the shop 
or you can have it delivered to your home and if it's not to your very high standards you can return it at no cost plus if you buy it around christmas um, fashion houses oftentimes have like an extending return time because they understand you're buying it for christmas louis vuitton dumbbells now i don't know about you but one of my new year's resolutions is to start working out more and if you have someone in your life like me who wants to work out more do i have the gift for you it is twenty six hundred dollar dumbbells what is two kilograms hold on four pounds they're four pound dumbbells for twenty six hundred let's round up twenty seven hundred dollars and also i think the funny part about these for me is that they're made and so they're luxury um so they have like epi leather handles which they say make them resistant to perspiration marks i would make the argument that the last thing i want to feel on sweaty hands is epi leather <laughs> like that's just that's just the absolute any leather the last thing i want to feel when i'm all sweaty and gross and i'm trying to use my 30 my 2600 dollars dumbbells is leather you know what else is resistant to perspiration um metal which is what normal dumbbells are made out of <laughs> like also the crazy part about this is that there's no way that this is actual gold like the sides of it are actual gold there's just no way that that's what that's made of so this is probably like gold plated so it's you know silver or whatever with like a gold spray paint also they're just ugly wait hold on barring like the fact that that's gonna chip and like look super ugly and the leather is gonna get super gross because you're gonna be sweating on it because leather is not water resistant no matter what leather it is barring all of that these are just fucking ugly like this is not even a cute little weight i remember this the ysl ones they were like sleek and they looked kind of cool this literally looks like what louis vuitton resellers make in order to like try to make something look like louis vuitton like this light pink with the fake gold and like the lv wrapped around the edges in leather who makes weights out of leather so stupid i don't understand it should i buy them i'll be like mom merry christmas um i knew you simply wanted like a new hair dryer but instead i got you these 4.4 pound dumbbells that are made of leather lunacy absolutely lunacy. smoky starts her talk with how she wants to work out more as an avid gym goer i love this i love seeing people wanting better for them prioritizing their own health setting great goals fun goals like doing a pull-up yes that that just won my legs are solid you know but i'm like a t-rex in heels this, this this is not it so good on you smoky i hope you smash it and i, I focus linda honestly i know this might sound ridiculous but i'd love these as a dumb joke decor hell i might even use them because i tell you what before we start trash talking how these are just two kilograms or four pounds maybe we do some well posture lateral raises grip exercises or finger strength conditioning exercises or we just generally don't you know people trying to get better now i am yet to exercise in a pure gold gym i am very keen um just for perspective one kilogram of gold is around forty thousand pounds sterling well over fifty thousand dollars and whilst metal is resistant to perspiration it's also very rough on your skin and i don't see real housewives of dubai you know cutting filing and over moisturizing these joints after an intense dumbbell workout so why not louis vuitton coffee cup lunacy absolute lunacy okay next this one I, this one's kind of funny <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry this one did make me chuck i'm not gonna buy it nor do i think anyone should buy this because it's literally like a porcelain cup with a louis vuitton koozie on it um they should just sell the koozie honestly people would probably buy that koozie absolutely they're gonna sell it for way too much but i bet people would buy the koozie the reason i thought this was genuinely funny is that on the cup they have it written like it says Louis, like Louis Vuitton. So like you know at Starbucks they write your name on the cup. Although I never get my name written on my cup. Although I never go inside, I was that's besides the point. Sorry. Sidetracked. Um I just feel like I never get that moment where they're like, Hannah, I never get that. Um anyway, I do think that it's objectively funny that they have the name Lewis written on this cup. I'm sorry. I do think that's kind of funny and a little bit clever. I do like when luxury brands are a little on the nose with things. Like I remember a couple of years ago, Gucci came out with this Gucky collection because they were mocking the sort of resellers who make their same products but change the name slightly. So they made their own collection that just said Gucky. Objectively it was ugly and overpriced, but I like when brands are on the nose. Like I like when they're a little bit funny about things. I think that this is genuinely funny it is a porcelain cup with a silicone lid again with the leather this like leather koozie that just says lewis also i don't know about you this louis vuitton print sometimes i think the louis vuitton print is kind of cute like i see some bags and i'm like that's cute i don't know what they did with the coloring of this particular print where it's like yellow almost underneath it's like a brown and yellow something about it is so unesthetically pleasing to me that i like literally can't take it it just doesn't make sense to me i get that people are into this and i try not to yuck people's yum but a 
thousand dollar do you know any of these little cups i have in my freaking mug cabinet that i bought for like five dollars at marshall's that say live laugh love those service me just fine nobody needs a one thousand dollar louis vuitton porcelain hot cup especially with a freaking silicone lid you've got to be kidding me oh this sleeve is not even leather it's fucking canvas that's why the coloring is so off that makes more sense i was like this isn't even leather it's leather lined but it's canvas that makes more sense so we couldn't even pick the real ridiculous coffee thing coming from the workshops of louis vuitton which is the three thousand dollar coffee cup bag also designed by Virgil Abloh, same as this Louis Vuitton exclamation uh, mark sign. But we're talking about this guy. Well, okay, first of all, if this is what it takes to get rich people using reusable cup, then I'm fine with that. Secondly, this one came out with Abloh's other collection, so it's already worth its money to some many people. The Louis Louis writing is resembling Starbucks. That's not a fake. And the logo on the sleeve uh, is a Virgil Abloh design. Again, not a fake. None of this is meant to be mocking fakes and the comparison to Gucci Gucky is, is a strip. But we're going to put a pin in that and we're going to cover that collection a little bit later when Gucci is talked about. This again, Petty Linda enters the chat. I personally get very annoyed with the phrase aesthetically pleasing, but the next level of unaesthetically pleasing is doing my head in. Yeah. <sighs> There's more. Number four. Then we're back with uh, Smoky Glow saying that she's just better off with her undisclosed number of reusable cups for virtually nothing. Again, good on you. I have one cup, one singular. And when that one falls apart, I'm going to get a Louis Vuitton one. Yes, I am. And I'm going to pretend my name is Louis or Louis. Point number five, which is five too many points talking about why someone does or does not need a reusable coffee cup. Saying no one needs this. That brings us back to logical fallacies. I need this. I can save up and get this if I want to. You're welcome to judge me for it. All you want. You could theoretically argue that absolutely incredible, iconic Louis Vuitton on pizza box is something no one needs but then again this is kind of the dumb fun that i'm here for and i would totally love it for me for you for anyone her last point about the coffee cup which is actually two in one is her saying that louis vuitton should sell just the sleeve i can only imagine that it would be us sitting here and smoky arguing oh for this price you can't even include the cup smoky's inspection of the sleeve material and coloring as it seems off to her um it's not off always looks like this so it's not off um, and it being coated canvas doesn't make it make sense unless stated otherwise Louis Vuitton monogram is always coated canvas uh, it can come in different colors but the standard is this uh, but you'd know that if you're interested at all that wraps up Louis Vuitton next up Gucci Gucci coasters. Next, I want to talk about what Gucci thinks you should buy your loved ones for the holidays. Um, first, we have this silver toned metal set of two coasters. Silver toned, so it's not even real silver, it's silver toned. Interesting. Uh, this is a set of coasters for $370 fucking dollars. So if you have a friend who just moved into a new home, like maybe a housewarming gift, some silver toned Gucci coasters. The thing about Gucci that's kind of sad to me, like their homeware stuff, is that some of their homeware stuff I actually do think is cute. Like I see the prints and stuff and the patterns that they have. And I'm like, wow, if I saw it at a thrift store for like 20 bucks, I might buy this. Like this is actually very cute. It's like super aesthetically pleasing. Like I'm, if this was like a pack of six uh, at a thrift shop, I'd buy this, absolutely. However, when you see it in this context, of being almost $400 for two little itty bitty coasters, you just can't stomach it. Like Gucci definitely has the audacity. A lot of these brands do, but Gucci especially. And I'll tell you where else they have the audacity. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's go. Yes, Gucci could make this pure silver. Absolutely. But I do agree. They could make this pure silver. Arguing that this is ridiculous, but cute, but ridiculous, but cute, is really unproductive. That's if I were to hate on someone's Lamborghini when they could have gotten a Kia, which would transport them from point A to point B. Or hating on someone getting a five-bedroom house when all they need is a two-bedroom. It serves their purpose and it's of value to them. So what makes it ridiculous? Gucci Dimitar spoon. Now I apologize in advance if I get irrationally angry talking about spoons. Don't make it. Like Gucci definitely has the audacity. A lot of these brands do, but Gucci especially. And I'll tell you where else they have the audacity. It's in this fucking coffee spoon. Oh my god. Okay, first of all, if you've been a part of my channel for a while and you've been a subscriber for a while, you know that I hate bees. Um, I have always been very afraid of bees. I very much respect what they do for our ecosystem. However, I have never been stung, so I always have this fear 
and I'm gonna be stung by a bee and be allergic and just not have known it my whole life and die. Um, funny story, back in um, September, um, this, because this year has been hell, back in September, I actually got stung by a bee for the very first time in my life. Um, I had a full-blown panic attack, and then once I realized I wasn't dying, took a Benadryl and was fine. So I now no longer like hate bees out of fear. Now I just don't like them because it fucking hurt. Everybody was like, bee stings don't hurt, just a little pinch. That was so painful. I know I have like a mildly low pain tolerance, but that was so painful. It was not fun. Um, anyway, these are coffee spoons, which do you know how fucking small, do you know how small coffee spoons are? Do you know how tiny a coffee spoon is? Coffee spoons are meant to be so small because they're just meant to put in like a little bit of sugar or like, you know, mix up your cream. The bees sitting on top is kind of a cool detail. I think it's wildly impractical in terms of being a coffee spoon. It serves no purpose and it's just there to look kind of cool. What I really have a problem with is that these tiny little spoons that are meant to be tiny little spoons are $350 for a set of two, for a set of two. They literally sell little wooden sticks that you can stir your coffee with for a set of two, $350. It's so funny because I'm doing another video um, talking about like the sister squad. I'm doing like an internet history on them. Spoiler alert, um, for that video, I watched well, all of their collaborations and I remember that one of the Dolan twins bought Emma Chamberlain two Gucci mugs and two Gucci coffee spoons for Secret Santa. And I remember thinking at the time, like, wow, that must've been like a hundred bucks total for like two mugs and some spoons because like it's gucci but like that's that's really expensive for like what it is apparently those spoons were 350 fucking dollars which is insane absolutely insane gucci nor any other luxury fashion brand or luxury brand operates on audacity they just understand the term market equilibrium and as every business they exist to make profit first of all bees wow okay She's been afraid of bees as she never got stung, but that it got stung and it hurt, uh, so she hates them. But respects what they do for the environment, but their sting hurts. Right. I know, imagine poor bee dying because its instinct is to protect her queen. And I get unbelievably passionate slash angry uh, talking about the detrimental effect that bee extinction would have on our nature. So let's just leave them be. Bee as a symbol has been with Gucci since late 70s. Gucci is hugely connected to nature and its motives. A humble working bee uh, who is also a symbol of nobility in Europe. But a bee sting hurts, so we hate it. You, Smokey, have no idea how wrong you are about spoons. Coffee spoons or Dimitas spoons, apologies to my French speaking friends, it's not my first language. Uh, Dimitas spoons are inherently luxury. From all the things all the things that we could have chosen, this was arguably a misstep. Dimitas are designed to be a luxury specialty item that truly belongs here. And in less well-off families, these would be passed on for generations, treasured, valued, hidden in the cleavage or silks when running from wars kind of thing. Historically, they are elite, high society, secret code word lifestyle of a symbol to a degree where there is a number of books written on formal dimmer settings shading people putting these coffee dimmer spoons on a dinner table for the actual dinner when these are meant to be brought out later they are small smoky is right about that but not just to mix sugar and cream in your coffee for which i choose not to judge you they are also an indicator of what dish to expect to be brought out next they are also an indicator of what dish to expect and how to pace ourselves. When you bring out a coffee spoon and a small fork, these tell you it's dessert time. It's the end, a very grand jour, finish off to that dinner. I don't think I can exaggerate the importance of Dimitas spoons in fine dining. On top of that, these are almost always a piece of artwork. A beautiful reveal to finish off your meal in this elegant, gorgeous setting, underlining the importance of this dinner party or a dinner date. These are not for your daily evening meal with the family, it's very much an event, a formal date night, an occasion. Which is why the standard setting is two of them in a set. Although Gucci does say on their website they can accommodate the sets of six and nine in a box. As time flies, people found a lot of use for Demita spoons. I personally got schooled on what role these play in current coffee world wave, which was unexpected and lovely. I do remember my great-grandmother having a set of two meant probably for cappuccinos as they were shaped like shells. Again, 
that makes sense to me now because I got that lecture on this being hugely trendy right now. People so passionate about it and are on that elite barista level, they don't necessarily come from wealthy backgrounds to become a barista, but they are still making amazing things, reintroducing Dimitar spoons to skim just enough foam from the top of a cappuccino or just to come out with perfectly served coffee to reinforce the importance of coffee etiquette. People don't have to know and or appreciate this at all. Or they are familiar with the etiquette but couldn't care less and that's absolutely fine. But can we at least not bring unnecessary hate to other people's passions? Absolutely insane. Gucci skateboard. The next Gucci item, and I remember I'm pretty sure I talked about the YSL skateboard in my last video. If I didn't, I meant to. But this one is for the skater in your life, the risk taker, the person who just loves to go to the skate park and rip on some pipes and that sounded like it was a reference to something else and it wasn't it truly was a skate reference anyway uh this is for the person in your life who loves to skateboard actually this is for like if you are a rich billionaire and you have like a nephew who's going to harvard because you paid for the library and he like wants to be a skater he's like a skater bro but he's like not a skater he just like smokes weed at skate parks um this is who this is for this is a gucci skateboard again objectively i don't hate the floral print behind the gucci i think it's actually very pretty i just have never ever in a million years met some who skateboards who would ever spend this much money on a decorative board like i could imagine if it had some sort of aerodynamic that made it super it made your half pipes go fat like i could imagine that if that's what you wanted to do i cannot imagine anyone i know in my life spending this amount of money for what is essentially something that you would like hang up and display as a skateboard nobody who actually skates is going to actually buy this and use this I, unless i guess you're jeffree star i remember he spent like fifty thousand dollars on a supreme skateboard once for his uh, boyfriend at the time but anyway you just look at this and it's so impractical if you're actually a skater they make a point of showing all these details like the bottom of the board and the like wheels being super fancy but it's like if you're actually going to use the skateboard all of that shit's going to get ruined in like three seconds plus skateboards break all the time they break so often they're kind of supposed to break at a certain point like the board itself is not the expensive part it's the wheels and the tracks that are the expensive part of skateboarding but i feel like for this what you're paying for is not the wheels and the tracks you're literally just paying for an expensive piece of plywood that has a Gucci logo on it, that the second you use it is going to get scraped up and rub off and just look stupid. Um, so yeah, don't fully understand the $2,000 Flora skateboard, um, but I guess if you have a skater bro in your life, a recommendation for you. Before Smoky Glow starts arguing, she sets the scene casually mocking skateboardists and I kind of hate it. But here comes more generalizations saying nobody's actually going to skate on this. So I. Like, but later, we talk about Jeffree Star, how they spend $59,000 on a Louis Vuitton Supreme skateboard. But that's okay when Jeffree does it? Is that what we are insinuating here? Then we get more commentary from Skateboard and Smokey talking about how very dare Gucci invests money and time into this to make an actual effort. The detailed wheels, the original 60s floral print design, the bag you can repurpose older when this skateboard, according to Smokey, inevitably breaks. And to wrap it up, let me just come on the record and say I do understand the concept of paying for the logo or brand value, if you like. Let me first talk about that pet cardigan. All right, next. <laughs> So Gucci specifically has a gift for your dog section, which don't get me wrong, my dogs all have stockings. I buy them gifts every year. I adore my dogs. Like, they absolutely get Christmas presents. Uh, unfortunately for Stella, this year one of them will not be a $650 Gucci Sherpa sweater. The reason I really picked this one and the reason that it was so funny to me was number one, look at that dog's face. That dog is not having a happy holiday. That dog looks like it's being held fucking hostage. That dog is not happy. I did love that you could buy the matching hat for it. I thought that was very funny. The reason I picked this was, number one, I think the Gucci pet section is so fucking funny just because it's absolutely ridiculous. Number two, $650 for this sweater is so funny to me because I actually bought my dog Stella a little coat that looks like this for wintertime. Um, and she, number one, absolutely hates it. She turns around and bites all of the fuzzies off and like picks them off and hates them. And then if you have more than one dog, God forbid, they went absolutely bananas on that coat. They loved biting the fuzzies off of this so that's just like number one dogs in general like to chew things and this looks like a chew toy so i'd essentially be making my dog look like a chew toy for my other dogs to chew on number two six hundred fifty dollars is just so crazy it's so crazy for like a little piece of carpet with some velvet lining and like a gold gg it's probably not even gold probably fucking plastic a plastic gg it's insane it's insane it's lunacy to me it literally it cracks me up honestly because i just can't imagine spending this dude this dog is so funny to me this dog is staring into my fucking soul right now. He's so not in the holiday spirit. He doesn't want to be wearing this. Oh my god, this picture. 
I like that they tried to make him look like he was like an antique or she. That they, this dog like an antique like woman. Like they put this filter over it to make it look like an old timey photo. Oh god, yeah. Don't buy a, a wool sweater for your dog. Just in general. But also, if you don't want your dog to look terrified like this dog, don't do it. The marketing photos just crack me up. Uh, that poor dog did not deserve this. Wow. Um, is it a stretch to say that Chihuahuas often look uncomfortable in photos? Probably. But in case you haven't seen my video about shopping for a pet friend, check it out. I actually like this one. This one will cut again. I had two dogs in my life consecutively and two cats at the same time. Rescues. Not chihuahuas, uh, but a Dalmatian and a setter. Oh God, I miss them so much. <sighs> Okay, um, my dogs would never dare to destroy this or destroy this while another doggo is wearing this coat. And if it takes pet owners to train their pets to behave in order to get pricey items and clothes for them, I'm fine with that. The last argument that this is not even pure gold is the real issue here, really. Believe it or not, people shopping in these shops usually understand the difference between fashion slash costume jewelry and fine jewelry. And again, if they don't, and they don't read the description, ask the question, and still see it as an issue, that sounds like a day problem, not the luxury fashion problem. And to this point, just because it's expensive doesn't mean that it's indestructible. And if people assume it is, again, that's on them. Gucci chess board. Finally for Gucci, honestly, I, the only reason I put this in is the price. That is like the only reason. I've actually really gotten into chess in the last year. I don't ask, but I've, it's a whole thing. It's kind of my depression game. Like I have it on my iPad and I just love playing it. It's actually a lot of fun. I've gotten very into it. I want to buy a chess board. I'm actually in the market for a chess board um, because I would love to have like a real one to play with people. Nobody would play with me anyway, but I kind of want a real one. I think it'd be fun to play on a real one. That's besides the point. That's a side tangent. Um, so I'm in the market for one. So mom, if you're watching, here's a great option for a Christmas gift. It is a $10,400 Gucci chess board for the chess lover in your life. I think the thing about this to me is that number one, the pieces objectively look ugly. It's in this super ugly like Gucci print that looks so awkward and bulky. And then if you look at the actual pieces, they're like birds with hats and owls and snails and horses. That's the one thing they kept the same. It just isn't like, they're not like cute little pieces like normal chess is. And I also think too, like if you're buying this, you're obviously buying it to display in your home. That's the only reason I could think anyone would actually buy a $10,000 chess board. But I do have this funny thing because they make a big deal about the case and the travel case and how you could like bring it with you places i do have a funny thought in my brain of if anyone watched the queen's gambit on netflix that chess show last year i do have a funny like scenario in my brain where that girl walks into all of her chess tournaments with this gigantic atrocious gucci case and just like slams it on the table she like pops it open and she sets it up for her chess opponents i don't know i just the, the thought of that is very funny to me of like a professional chess player actually using this thing and lugging it around to competitions and people being like what the fuck does the rabbit and the snail mean because that's not actual chess pieces i can't imagine spending ten thousand dollars i feel like most of what you're paying for has to be the little carry case that's gotta be where they got the price from is like this trunk like carrying case not the actual chess board they're calling it a decorative wooden chess board so why are they making such a big deal about the fact that you can carry it around places if the whole point is you like set it up on a table i don't know um it's a mystery to me it's a mystery to everyone and that's gucci um so if you have a chess lover in your life there you go. now let me tell you what I did not expect to be ranting about chess in my little fashion corner. But let me break the silly fun arguments down to sections. First, a little bit of the colorful history of chess. Interestingly enough, the noble game of chess had a huge tradition before Queen's Gambit made it to Netflix. We're talking thousands of years ago in different variations of the game. The chess chess hasn't even been always a poor man's hobby, or in the case of my father, a competitive hobby. Speed chess, actually. I digress. Chess is a global thing, game, again, with thousands years of history. Different places have different variations and use and different sets. Chess with geometrical pieces are early accommodating to places where pieces shaped like royals, humans or gods were just frowned upon or even legal. Chess has been known as the royal game or the game of kings since 15th century when aristocracy realized they could have fun with this, fun with more than the actual game. A trend has set off. Having your own custom designed handmade chess set wasn't enough. It ventured into home decoration and we know this 
uh, when you visit a historical landmark like a castle, there is evidence to support this. Sets were designed to be decorative as a symbol of a noble status. Custom made but also perfectly placed and installed so that it looks mid-game. Glue to the bloody chessboard. I mean, not actually bloody. Well, meticulously created. There were pieces designed to be laid down next to the board as the defeated soldiers. Sets were modelled after people who were important in the family and passed on for generations. Sets and boards ornate and artsy that were meant just to be played with but also to pose as a beautiful, elegant thing because status and class and elegance. And tell you what, when peasants realized that they can carve their own from wood and started to play too, aristocrats were not happy. Whilst I am totally with you and girl power, I can't help but to bring lodging into this. Competitive chess sets, boards and pieces have developed as the competitive society understood it would be so handy to have something unified and standardized. Stoughton said that particular set and styled is known after someone named Stoughton. I know, was a design for competition, styled in a streamlined way so that competitors could scan the board and be like, well, what do we have here? And just rock it, Paul Benko style. It was a set easy to standardize and replicate and it found its place. Funnily enough, chess sets from the last century, coming from countries that think communism is great not just on paper, are very similar to the Stoughton set, as they were just heavily dressed down to represent that working class and standardized to be able to mass produce them and hand them out for cheap. Over the decades, one country in particular has brought chess to a different level. And if you've uh, picked up chess, you probably know this, but humor me. It's been about a thousand years since Russia was first introduced to chess, more or less current days chess. Did I say Russia? I meant to say undisclosed communist country currently in war with a democratic country over a false geo-argument that has been fabricated by an absolutist about 100 years ago. That's what I meant to say. This no-name country of Russia has very famously used chess as a political game to show superiority, power moves, intellectual strategy and even strength. They took it and ran with it so enthusiastically that the culture of chess developed with such speed and has such tradition that Westerners might struggle to understand. Russia actually values chess players. It's their own thing, their status, their class. There is a scene in Queen's Gambit showing the outdoor tables designed for you just to rock up with your pieces and play random opponents. That's very much a thing. Also, it's cheap. And uh, surprise, surprise, this anonymous communist Russia of a country takes pride in something that is highly standardized, universal, and can be given out to masses to enable them to get good in chess and show other countries demonstrate their superiority whilst keeping them in communist checkmate or well, stalemate. We have seen many chess manufacturers take and stand against Russia attacking Ukraine and we have seen those that specialize in a Russian collector's item to move away from the Stoughton set and from their set and move to nature inspired set or other to bring awareness to the fact that they are taking stand in solidarity with Ukraine. Maybe Gucci does know that Russia has used chess for diplomacy, political games and all that and maybe they have created something this immaculate to show solidarity and take a stand and this might very well be a we're absolutely not putting our name on anything that will end up as a status flaunt power move or anything like that because being head to toe dressed in Gucci became very much of an urban joke showing status in a communist country where the working class is single-handedly responsible for country's well-being but then also how do you show status not to mention that it is set is in the briefcase. It might be very well a shade of KGB. This one, communist oppressor of a country, secret service. Maybe Gucci is making nothing but a luxury chessboard to show status and help someone flaunt their wealth. Might as well. In which case, these Gucci pieces are actually designed to a natural hierarchy of biology and I absolutely adore them. All's are the business. The materials used are very much helping drive the holy price tag 
up. Not to mention the supply chain crisis that has been in development since 2008 market crash sped up by the pandemic. And have I mentioned there is a literal war in Europe? Inflation, the costs of living, everything is through the bloody roof and it will show on the market of everything. And just in case I was too casual about this, I do stand with Ukraine against Stalin, Putin, their oligarchs against all that legacy. Speaking of shading Eastern countries manufacturing and exporting counterfeit products, Smokey Glows uh, mentions Gucci Gaki. It doesn't matter that it looks ugly. It was meant to look ugly, as Smokey says, and it was very much Gucci taking a stand and capitalizing on it, for sure. However, you'd only be paranoid about wearing counterfeit if you are, I don't know, promoting acquiring such items on craft markets. Third, but not least, Dior. But Dior seems to really care about the holidays, and I'll tell you why. It's because they sell stupidly expensive Christmas ornaments. I think Prada also sells Christmas ornaments. They may not sell them. They might just send them to influencers. I remember last year on TikTok, there was this huge scandal where people thought that people were breaking their Prada uh, Christmas ornaments on purpose because, like, four different fashion influencers broke their ornaments upon opening them, and everyone thought it was this big scheme by Prada to get people talking about their products more. Honestly... I, I buy it. I believe that that was a marketing ploy. But anyway, Dior also sells these Christmas ornaments. These ones are $650. And they're like, I mean, they're pretty. Don't get me wrong. Again, if I saw that at HomeSense, like, I'd be like, oh my God, $5. Sign me up. $650 for a set of four. Absolutely not. Do you want to know what ornaments do? Ornaments break. Do you know how many broken ornaments I've had in my lifetime? There was one Christmas. My mom used to do this thing. We had little mini Christmas trees in our rooms growing up. And every year she would buy us one ornament to put on the tree that sort of like represented our year or was just like meaningful. Like one time she got me a grilled cheese. A grilled cheese ornament. But I had like a ballerina ornament. I had all these pretty ornaments on this little tree that I'd been having over time. And the plan was by the time we were like 18 and we were moving out on our own, we would have all of these special ornaments that had meaning to get us started on our own Christmas trees in our own places. That was the idea. When I was, I had to have been eight or nine, uh, that tree fell off my dresser and every single ornament broke. Um, my mom did make up for it. She took me to the store and we rebought the ornaments that we could. So like I still have those. But that tree broke. Um, that tree fell. It broke. Ornaments break. Every year when I go to get all of my ornaments, there's something that's broken because it got jostled around wrong or it wasn't packed right or while i have my tree up my dogs will just like run into my freaking christmas tree and stuff will fall ornaments break i understand there's some that are really sentimental and valuable and i get that but those are usually valuable and sentimental because they have a particular meaning to you and your family i have ornaments from family members that are super sentimental and important to me but it's not because i spent 650 dollars on them from dior it's because they remind me of setting up a tree with my mom or doing something special. like that's the reason it's special not because you spend so much money on it not to get too deep i know this is a pretty lighthearted video but the fact that the dior sells stuff like this like this 650 dollars set they also have this 950 dollar crystal set that's only three of them but they're way more expensive because they're crystal the fact that they sell stuff like this almost pisses me off a little bit because it, i know it's like the whole point of christmas is capitalism to a certain extent i understand that buying gifts even at all is a capitalist thing but i just feel like taking something that's like supposed to be maybe I'm, maybe this is just my family but like ornaments are really special we like save them from years my mom has ornaments from when she was a kid i have ornaments from when i was a kid my mom has ornaments from like her grandmothers um so the idea that like those types of things that are supposed to be very sentimental and special and they decorate your tree and look really pretty and it's supposed to be this like thing that you do that's like a family thing like decorating a tree i feel like the fact that they've made even that this capitalist shit show where it's like a thousand dollars for three fucking ornaments to hang on your christmas tree is just so bonkers to me the other thing is if you're rich you probably have a pretty big tree so what are three of these little ornaments gonna do and if you're rich you're probably doing like a, some sort of themed tree i would imagine i feel like that's what i see all the kardashians doing is like fucking themed trees so i can't really imagine being that rich and buying three of these does, does it go with your theme does it not go with your like i don't know what are three out of a big tree this is gonna get lost in the sauce anyway i don't know maybe i'm overthinking this the ornaments have always pissed me off i remember even last year when i saw those product ornaments i was so annoyed because i was like that just means What's absolutely baffling to me is how Smoky Glow goes back and forth, pro and con, value and the meaning of our ornaments actually arguing with and against her at the same time. She shared a beautiful, slightly heartbreaking story about her mom giving them ornaments every year and then them breaking when the tree fell. In some countries, historically, ornaments came as a part of dowry, together with tableware, cookware, beddings, as it was very much expected of the wife to make a home. And the sentimental connection to it, random items of value that others don't necessarily see as valuable. We have a pickle on our Christmas tree. A pickle Rick! Because we thought it was hilarious. Train. 
and we laugh every year about it when we're decorating the tree. Let's ignore the comment about your actually caring about Christmas because they make ornaments. Again, market equilibrium. Ornaments can be there solely for the aesthetic and that's okay. If it's sentimental to someone, who are we to judge? If you are from a family that values ornaments, wouldn't you like to give something like that to your family at some point? On one hand, this could have potentially a lot of value because I have ties to it and they have value, sentimental or monetary. I have to love fashion, I happen to love Christmas and if anyone wants to give me a set of Dior crystal ornaments you're super welcome to. But at the same token Smoky Glow argues why would you spend money on this and how dare you. On top of it we're assuming that no one with wealth has emotional attachment to their ornaments. That's another hasty generalization. A bad one if you ask me. Themed tree isn't excluding the fact that people value their things especially when holidays are the time when families like that come together. And that's not just based on what you or society see on the Kardashians' TikTok accounts. Many families come together over the holidays as they're busy working and providing, or they have shipped off their children to boarding school, yada yada, all the things. People can have money and emotions at the same time. I don't get how untrained animals are mine or House of Dior's problem. Just to reiterate, I have a child, I had two cats, two dogs, now the child is 13 and has just stopped randomly running into the decorated tree, so good. Yet when I buy anything for the household, I am somewhat preparing myself for the possibility that it might get broken one day because people are allowed to be clumsy and it doesn't necessarily have to be a set of Dior crystal ornaments. It can be a water jug, it can be a plate, it can be really anything. So was this just an immediate knee-jerk reaction? Why don't we research things, especially when we want to shit on things? Research and, you know, better know what we're talking about because then it comes across just as petty and rude and kind of ignorant. And to say this was meant to be fun and silly, to wash our hands off any potential consequences? Am I ignorant about cars? Yes. Am I willing to go online and argue that just because I don't like cars, they're stupid and therefore people shouldn't buy it? No. I love a discussion though. And whilst Smoky Glow is trying to dismiss things, is putting them down, spreading sort of dislike to her half a million subscribers, I kind of, I would love us to ultimately to come together with an open mind, share things and ultimately if we disagree we can walk away slightly more educated and with respect for each other. Because we all have love, care and passion for something and it won't always be the same thing. And these luxury things might be associated with people or a system that you, Smoky Glow, don't appreciate and therefore you came for it as a fun and silly video. But life is not that simple or black and white. To say that I don't care, but I make a video about it on a public platform to my half a million subscribers, that might, that might disagree with that statement. I'm not defending supreme wealth or telling Bezos what he should or should not do with his money. We ask people to be curious when it comes to social issues and you rewind to my previous previous video about frivolous spending and the stigma it comes with it, it's very much tied to it together. The commentary like this is actually perpetuating that stigma. If you want to make it fun, just let the boy the teddy say it's ugly and off we go. If you want to make a deeper argument, let's make the deeper argument. Just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's ridiculous. I'm afraid that's it on my side. I appreciate you sticking with me till the end. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, thumbs down. If you'd like to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.